engagement opportunities of the summer. And some Squawk Mountain residents may recall that there were plans with King County Metro to create a flexible transit service solution for Squawk Mountain and also the Talos neighborhood. Metro has suspended most of that program in 2020 due to both financial and physical distancing limitations that came about through the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we still remain in close contact with Metro and we are still hoping to explore more opportunities to expand transit into your neighborhoods um, during this post COVID recovery. And speaking of COVID, uh, I wanted to let you know that I have formed the Issaquah Vaccine Community Partnership earlier this year. We are preparing to set up a vehicular vaccination site in Issaquah that would serve East King County. We're in the proposal stages right now. Eastside Fire and Rescue is one of our partners and they are helping us set up the logistics so that when vaccine supply becomes more readily available, we want to be ready to help in the community with the vaccination program. So stay tuned for information on that. Later this week, we'll follow up with an email that includes links to several of these projects or initiatives and contact information. So again, I just wanna thank everybody for coming tonight. I'm now going to turn it over to our director, our Parks and Community Services, Jeff Watling, and he's gonna kick off our discussion tonight on Hillside Park, Jeff. Mayor Polly, thanks so much for being here. Thank you as well, council members um, and community. Uh, really appreciate the, the turnout tonight. Um, yeah, we're excited. Um, a little bit of, um, I guess, an introduction of sorts as to why we're here, and then I'm gonna hand it over to our, our consultant team. Um, as many of you probably know, uh, in 2014, uh, the city, uh, the Parks Department um, staff um, and neighborhood had a series of discussions and conversations about Hillside Park and, and uh, talked about a number of things from um, operations and maintenance to um, capital wishes and aspirations. One of the top priorities that, that came out of that effort was how to incorporate a play area into this site. Um, uh, great news in that uh, the mayor and city council both prioritized and budgeted uh, some funding um, in 2021 uh, to get that done, to, to, to get um, a play area established within this park. Um, tonight, and, and this conversation really uh, represents how we want to start this work. Uh, we want to start this work with a, a conversation with all of you. We, we know this is a much loved park. Uh, we know there's a lot of um, emotion and feelings around this park and what better way to, to explore this idea of a play area uh, than to talk with you and and really utilize the conversations uh, that we had in 2014 as the starting point. Um, so that's what that's what you're going to hear. Um, and um, I think what you're going to um, hopefully see tonight as as we engage is a pretty fun process uh, where we're going to dig into some analysis that starts with what we've heard um, and then really uh, I think tries to seek a way. Um, uh, to incorporate play um, into this park, um, understanding the natural and preserving the natural character of this park, uh, the passive feel of this park, um, uh, work with the, in the environmental conditions of this site, um, understand um, preserving the existing uses of this park, um, and then uh, lastly, within the play, how do we utilize natural materials um, uh, within the play structure to, to make that happen? So uh, really excited. Uh, what you're gonna hear tonight is sort of in the agenda that you see sort of lays out two segments of the conversation tonight. First will be the set of analysis uh, where along with the, the, the feedback, um, uh, we'll present some of what we've learned about the site, some of the environmental conditions that we're aware of and, and are going to need to work within and around and want to work around and within. Um, uh, we'll pause after this analysis uh, segment and open up for questions and, and comments. Um, as Jennifer said, we welcome comments uh, throughout this entire series within the chat box. That's available for everyone to see. Um, and something that uh, we really take as important feedback through this process, knowing that some are, are going to want to um, provide us uh, feedback in, in any number of variety of ways. So after that analysis work, uh, we're then going to take a, 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 hopefully what you'll find is a, a creative way of approaching play. Um, I think when, you, when, when people hear, hey, we're going to put a player in a park, often the visual is, this is going to look just like 
any play area at an elementary school or one of our parks. But I, I think what you'll find with with our team with Mathoon is uh, we can take some really creative approaches to play and how play gets incorporated into parks um, in a variety of ways and can be done so within um, the unique character of, of that park. So uh, we're going to be test driving some some interactive tools. I wish we were all in a room, as the mayor said, um, and working um, on boards and, and getting your feedback um, like we would in a face to face public meeting. But we're going to utilize some technology and some fun ways that we'll be test driving to um, get instant feedback tonight. Um, I also want to note um, we're recording tonight and, and we're going to take this recording and put it online. Uh, we're going to have a survey that the very questions you're taking tonight will be replicated in a survey. Uh, we know not everyone's able to join us tonight, though we love seeing that we're at, at 50 participants. Uh, but we're going to invite you to, to share this with your neighbors and share the opportunity to, to watch this recording, uh, take the survey, um, and again, really try and garner as much feedback we can in this next week. The ultimate goal tonight is to listen. Um, and, and to really learn what it is you're interested in. I've had the pleasure of working through these last 20 years with communities um, dozens of times with, with park um, projects. Um, I love public engagement. And one thing I, I know of every public engagement I've done is not everyone thinks the same. We are gonna have a mix of opinions tonight and that's okay. Um, there's a whole variety of hopes, dreams, and fears probably within this virtual room, and we want to hear them all because ultimately what's going to help us craft the best option is hearing that and, and allowing us to try and find a balanced solution uh, within all of that. So um, welcome. Thanks so much for being here and, and taking the next uh, these next 90 minutes with us. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Deb Gunther, who's with Methuen Architects, and uh, we will get this started. So thank you again for being here. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mayor um, Polly, for um, th that those great introductions. Um, we are going to walk through, um, as Jeff mentioned, um, and, and I think have some fun tonight with the ways we engage um, and ask some questions. And uh, so no pressure, as you as you heard from Jeff, there's lots of ways to engage. So um, whatever you're comfortable doing and, you know, make yourself comfortable as we kind of spend the next um, until seven uh, tonight together. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Christian, who's going to walk through the analysis, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit more about the play experiences and some of the site ideas. So, Christian, do you want to take it from here? Sure. Thanks, Dad. We can go to the next slide, Jennifer. Uh, while, while you're doing that, I'll just let you know that in addition to the Methune team of landscape architects, we are working with Herrera who's uh, working as both civil engineer and environmental consultant on this particular project, looking closely at the hillside uh, environment for us. And also Chris McGarvey is in the meeting with us tonight. He's a play um, consultant with Northwest Playground, which is a Issaquah based playground um, company. And so they're, they're gonna be working with us throughout the project, providing their expertise to help us uh, create a, a really uh, interesting, well-crafted and safe play experience uh, for this project. So we are going to use a, a, a Mentimeter polling system uh, a little bit later in the presentation in order to get your uh, feedback from this large group. So we're just going to take a minute to test drive it with everybody. So if, if you have a phone um, handy, the, the best way to, to use the poll is, is to use your phone. And if you go into any of the web browsers that you typically use, like Safari or Chrome or Firefox on your uh, phone, or your computer, if that's your only choice, and just type in menti.com. That you where you can enter the code that's shown here, 16, 10, 12, 1, and that'll get you into the polling system. We're gonna just take a couple minutes before we can get situated, test out the menti website on their phone, enter the code, and try this for test polling question, which is, do you live near Hillside Park? This is where I cue up the Jeopardy music, Christian? No. 
Yeah, I was hoping you were going to bring the Jeopardy music. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, it's like a minute or two. If anyone's having trouble with the uh, mental, we also have a hyperlink in the chat box. Um, you can just click right on that and it should take you to a window on your computer where you can enter the code. And someone has mentioned this, they're having trouble accessing the poll. So, yeah, if others are having issues, please just enter that enter that into the chat box. Try the hyperlink in the chat box if you're not able to get on via the, your phone. Might want to add too when you type in the code, don't put any spaces in there, just type in a solid number. So, Jen, we're up to about 41. So, the majority of people have gotten there. Just a heads up. Perfect. Thanks, Thomas. Okay, we're going to move forward. And uh, in addition to the polling, which we're going to get to, uh, as has been described already, we have the chat box, and there will be points in time where I just mentioned a particular question we might have for you that we'd like you to answer. And you can start to enter that information in the chat box. You can also ask comments along the way at any time. And as Jeff mentioned at pause points, we're going to, we're going to come back to the chat box and open up the form to have a little bit more of a conversation. We want to be able to get through a series of slides to kind of give you an overall context for, um, this project. So I'm going to jump into analysis now and, um, we'll, uh, go from there. So next slide, please. So. Um, first, we're just going to talk a little about what we heard in 2014 uh, at the last community discussion about Hillside Park. And this is a, a summary of some of the comments that we heard at that time, including the, the desire to have a play area, but one that has uh, unique play opportunities, is made of natural materials that's not a destination playground due to lack of parking and other concerns. It's a, a neighborhood playground, and that it really blends into the natural environment. We also heard a lot of concern about the drainage issues at the field, which I believe have been um, a longstanding issue, as well as making that a more usable space and field, as well as improving the circulation, the trails, the accessibility, and that overall network of formal and informal trails. Next slide, please. So tonight, um, it's important, uh, we're gonna focus in on the play area and in particular also think a little bit about the field and accessible circulation to the play area. Um, this overall um, plan is could be phased over time. So for instance, um, after the play area is put into place, we could also look at field improvements uh, and other circulation improvements. But our focus tonight is mostly on play. And so that should hopefully be fun once we get to the talking about that. Um, so just if you have any initial thoughts about what we're missing or what has changed, Think about that, add thoughts to the chat box or, or save it for our pause point coming up. Next slide, please. So just to talk a little bit about the environmental context, I think all of you are familiar with a location of Hillside Park, some of the north um, toe of Squawk Mountain sitting above the downtown of Issaquah, and also that it's really part of this transition zone in, in our bioregion between the Puget Lowlands and the Cascade Mountains. So it's this really lush and uh, beautiful foothills environment that's so, it's so critical and such an important part of the Issaquah environment. Um, Doug firs, hemlocks, cedars, really lush understory, all parts of this environment and are seen quite readily at Hillside Park, as you all know. Um, next slide, please. See chat comments coming in, by the way. A new th with regards to the environment, one new thing that um, that's, that's occurring in Issaquah is called the Natural Environment Checklist. And we're going to talk just a little bit about it tonight and how we're addressing it for this project. And then also when we when we meet again in, in about six weeks, we're going to actually literally go through the checklist, which is part of required as part of community meetings. This is stuff we would do already. Um, the first part of it is looking at critical areas. And so you can see this list here on the left are the critical areas and the ones that are highlighted are the ones that we think could be something to consider and look at. And we're doing that with Herrera, our environmental consultant right now. And that would be wet components of wetlands, whether that be plants or soils, 
or steep slopes or landslide hazards related to erosion, landslides, or, or mines on site. Um, those are the, the particular critical areas that we think will be an issue at Hillside Park. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, we also have a, a um, checklist that is sort of beyond code or beyond code compliance, and that's going to show up here on the right in a second. The two, um, we won't go into great detail, but the two parts of this that we think are most important for us right now would be uh, number three, which is, I'm sorry, number four, protection of scenic resources and most importantly, mature stands of trees at Hillside are a major factor of why it's such a beautiful site. And then also number seven is direct drainage, both on the field and, and nearby steep slopes that are further downslope are, are quite serious, though. Those are true um, delineated steep slopes at the county level. So we're going to look really carefully at those in particular as we look at environmental issues on site. So, uh, again, another prompt to think about when we get to our discussion is what are your thoughts about other environmental issues that we haven't talked about yet that interest you uh, and should be considered when we think about siting a play area at Hillside? Um, so, again, any thoughts are welcome in the chat box now, and we'll talk a little bit about it in a minute. Um, and next slide, please. There's uh, one more thing we're going to talk about before this sort of analysis discussion, and that is just kind of understanding the site context and the, the sort of area that we're considering the, the smaller areas part of Hillside. So, as you know, it's a larger, mostly forested park. The area in red is the primary area that we're going to talk about tonight that has potential for a play zone. Um, it's just south of the upper hillside cemetery and accessible from Mount McKinley Drive Street. That's the main entrance from the south. Uh, and of course, a number of trails come from a different locations and we'll look at that in a second. So next slide, please. So we're going to zoom in a little bit into this this area highlighted in red. And a couple things to point out here um, is number one, the there's a walk in entry at uh, Mount McKinley Drive. Uh, obviously, no real parking, so to speak, up there. Um, so it's a neighborhood park. It's a place you all use and access for natural recreation. The arrow lines in yellow uh, denote some of the formal and informal trails that exist out in the park and through the forest. We know that this site also has a large clearing that was has at least been around for 40 or 50 years, um, used as a play field, a, a ball field at a time, and was probably graded as such a, quite a while ago, uh, in addition to quite a bit of lush, very intact native forest. Um, next slide, please. Getting some great chat comments coming in. Sorry about the lag, but that's <laughs> we have 50 people on here and videos and all this other stuff. Um, so we also know there are some constraints in this area. The the big red area denotes some of the significant steep slopes to the east uh, above 40% in grade, um, which require a 50 foot offset and considerations about drainage from any kind of development area. Um, we also know that we have to have a 200 foot buffer from the cemetery and that's that bold dash line at the north end of the project site running east west. Um, so that sort of forms a boundary on the north side. We also know there's a required 40 foot buffer from residential uh, houses. Uh, many, some of you probably live in these houses on the west and south side. So we want to be really careful about not citing active uh, play area too close to homes. So that starts to compress in some of the potential development areas in here, in addition to some of the slopes that uh, are even in this area somewhat steep. Um, so those are some a couple of the constraints. We go to the next slide. <clears throat> One other thing I mentioned while that's transitioning is um, with our uh, team at Herrera. We're assessing the, the trees out on site, and we do know there are obviously, per city standards, um, quite a few significant trees. That's anything over six inches diameter at breast height up to uh, quite a few landmark trees, which are much, much larger trees, old growth trees in this area. So before we get into an open conversation, I just want to talk a little bit about a couple potential areas where we could site a playground and a little bit about the scale and nature of that. 
And then later we're going to actually pull you on what area you think is the best. But for now, we're just going to kind of inter introduce these ideas. Um, actually, let me, let me stop for a second. Sorry, sorry to jump ahead. We're going to jump back 1 slide, please Jennifer and we'll, we're going to stop and open it up for questions. Uh, before we get into the sighting, sorry to spoil it. There's a little bit of a spoiler there. <laughs> if anyone has a question, they'd like to ask if you can question in the chat box and we'll call your name and you can, um, if you want to bring it up out loud. So just want to be clear. Any, any thoughts on community. other environmental concerns that we haven't picked up on? Are there any, is there anything that's changed since 2014 that makes you think differently about the uses at Hillside Park? Hey, Christian, here's a question uh, that was asked. Are we planning on removing trees or including parking? I can, I can answer that. Uh, parking is not a part of the scope of this work. Um, we're still planning on managing this as a, as a walk in park. Um, our goal would also be to retain uh, trees and, and forest. Uh, that question was asked a couple times so far in the chat box. So thanks for those questions. Mm -hmm. to hear that there are a lot of there's a lot of wildlife moving through this space not not a big um surprise there it's part of a, a large quite a network of, of habitat up on squawk what about keeping the baseball field that is well loved yeah our intention would be to to keep uh to keep that open field uh and again preserve that um use for both just drop in play and and all varieties of of uses with that field Just I'm monitoring the chat real quick, Jeff. Sorry to interrupt. Um, it seems that there are some people that are having a hard time um, sharing a chat to everyone and they're just coming to me directly. So if, for those of you who are experiencing that, if you want to go ahead and send in a question or comment um, in the chat, I will do my best to monitor those. And we will be copying the chat and saving that as record that will also post to the website just to let everyone know. Thanks. And and as you're all becoming familiar with WebEx, when you're in the chat box, you can choose to who you want to send your chat to. Make sure it says to everyone and then we'll all be able to view it. I see a question too about the 40 foot buffer. Is it from the property lines? This would be from the property line is is the minimum distance we'd want to consider. We can always consider we we could always place it further away, but that's that would be the minimum from the property line. That's what the map is showing here. I've got one question here. Are we going to add sidewalks to make it safer to travel to and from the park? Um, at this time, that is not part of the scope of the work or the funding available, but we will definitely work with our uh, public works department for see what we could do for future access. I saw this at a teen responding here, and that reminds me to mention that if any anyone here has a, a child of any age from um, a child at heart down to, a, you know, a toddler and have any other comments or want to ask questions of them, we're, we're all ears too. We'd love to hear more comments about how um, all ages uh, folks would use this place. And have fun up here and play and engage with it. And just to reiterate, in case people didn't see, if you're doing the Mentimeter on your phone, um, is everyone else still there? I think we might have just lost. Jennifer, I think we, we may have lost, lost Jennifer, Jennifer for a second there. Uh oh. Okay. Christian. I'm still here, Jeff. Okay. Sorry. Uh, me too. Why don't we continue? Uh, looks like we had a question. Uh, appreciate all these questions. Um, I think a question in regards to the trail off of Mount um, Kenya. Uh, would love to um, maybe understand, is there a desire to 
improve it or are you wanting to preserve it? Um, So I think Nathan, you certainly could type in additional info to, to help us understand um, what that question might be. Um, a question in regards to the cemetery. Um, will they be expanding or clearing the forest up the west side? Uh, that plan is uh, no. Uh, we've been working with our cemetery partners, Flintoffs um, and City Council. We spent a lot of time last year uh, putting together a management plan for the cemetery that would look at um, really long term management uh, and planning for the cemetery uh, to stay within its existing footprint. For some reason, my sharing. Stopped, please excuse me while I see what. Okay. I saw a couple other comments come through about privacy. I think that's a, a, a good theme to discuss. I think both visually and, you know, sound. Uh, privacy for houses adjacent to the park in this area as it relates to a play location is really important. And, and definitely, so our next topic will be just introducing a couple possible locations and, and that's certainly 1 of and each location has. Um, opportunities and trade offs that I think, um, relate to that question. So we'll, um, we'll take a look at in a 2nd when we get back up here. Magic, we're back up. Looks good, Jen. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna press forward. And again, we have we've been copying all of these. One of the great things about Zoom is we can just really copy all of these questions and comments and preserve them um, quite a bit easier than um, in person. So, thanks for all of that. Um, just two things I want to uh, describe right now here. The first is. We, we've looked at some of these environmental considerations. We've looked at proximity to um, households in the McKinley Drive entrance, the buffers from the cemetery, and we've identified a couple potential areas that could have a play area. And I'm just gonna describe those to you now and then talk a little bit more about what that play area could be like in each one of those places. And then we're gonna dive deeper into the aspects of play and then come back once we've th talked a little bit more about that to really answer this question of where the play area could be cited. So we're gonna start, um, number A here is a play area that's um, closest to Mount McKinley Drive and the park entrance, and it's closer to that 40 foot buffer from residences. It's would be located inside the um, Cedar Grove, um, that's out there um, to the left of where that big rock is that some folks were mentioning. This area has potential for a small to medium sized structure due to the proximity to trees. Um, and it, it will have impact to tree roots, although our, but our arborist um, has discussed with our arborist that um, none of the cedars in here would need to be removed or mitigated. Um, cedar, they're all healthy and they all could tolerate some root pruning and amendments uh, and some sensitive site work to install a, a moderate size play area. Area B is sort of right field out there in the in the field. And um, this is in the clearing. It's much more out in the open on the edge of the forest. It's a little bit further away from the entrance and from houses. Um, it has the potential for any from for a small to large play structure if desired. Um, and the tree impacts here would be really minor. Uh, obviously, it's not really located in the forest. Um, number C or letter C, sorry, is uh, for those of you who are familiar with the site, there's a clearing here. You can see the image in the lower right. There's a sort of a forest clearing here that would be um, much further away from Mount McKinley Drive, much more secluded and much more naturally immersive environment um, for a nature play area. And there is potential probably for a medium to large um, wood structure, for instance, uh, or naturalistic structure, uh, but the potential impacts to trees uh, could be significant in that um, there are a number of 
large trees there that would need to be selectively pruned or there could be selective removal of trees in order to really have a safe playground here. Right now, it's a natural forest. When you add playgrounds and children to this mix, it needs to be a safer environment and some of those trees would pose a hazard. So keep that in mind, uh, those potential trade-offs are having a more immersive and more removed kind of play space. The next slide is just talking about this idea of we could have a lot of different scales of play here. When we talk about a large play area, what we're really talking about is something with multiple pieces of equipment. It could all be logs, it could all be wood, uh, but it's a larger, more concentrated structure or a series of structures. There could also be um, a smaller play structure in a series of did smaller discovery play or discovery uh, nature play areas as what as number two is showing. Or we could really just say, you know what, we don't really think a bigger structure is 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 the right fit here. We could have a, just a distributed series of smaller play elements along a trail, for instance. So we really want you to think about the sites, and we really want you to think about this range. Um, and we're going to get back to asking you which ones you prefer after we talk a little bit more about play and do some of these fun pulling exercises. So I'm going to turn it over to Deb, and she's going to talk a little bit about these opportunities for play experience and uh, natural playgrounds. Great. Thank you, Christian. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, just to, to sort of introduce the play experiences, um, you know, they're, one of the wonderful things about, and I'm so glad that there are some kids on the, on the call here, because um, one of the wonderful things about uh, play and no matter what age you are um, is that there you're there's so many things that are happening when play is happening and so it's not only it's it's development physical development in the gross motor skills and building a sense of balance and what happens when you're going down a slide or you're going on a zip line or you're rolling down a hill you're actually calibrating your body i think it's called vestibular uh, balance some of you probably know um, more details about that if you're into physical um, physical fitness and physical um, uh, development. But there's so many things that are happening when you're having these kind of gross motor skill experiences. So um, you know, that's one kind of type of play experience. Another is just uh, building imagination and uh, you know getting uh, skills of observation, of really kind of interacting with simple materials um, with leaves, with rocks, with stone, with, um, you know, twigs, and um, some uh, places that have implemented fairy village type areas that actually encourage um, the development of buildings, you know, small, uh, small places and small environments with those materials like leaves and sticks and, and rocks. So some really fun imaginative play can happen um, in a, in, at a very you know, much smaller, uh, in, uh, low impact scale. Um, adventure play is um, the idea that, you know, if, if uh, as many of you have probably been to the beach and built driftwood forts, I mean, the idea of actually using some some of the twigs, some of the limbs that are naturally occurring and actually creating environments for play. Uh, and then the idea of perching and that imagination that comes from really feeling like you're in the treetops or that you're uh, you have a, a territorial view um, from up high uh, can really spark the imagination. And of course, um, social opportunities, another category of play experience, being able to have some quiet and reflective time as well as social time and connecting with others. And that gathering um, uh, kind of environment could also be a piece of play equipment where you're gathering and you're actually playing together. So if you think about say like a seesaw where you're actually doing something with somebody else um, so there's some social, you know, aspects to the choices of the kinds of play equipment that we could have here. So we just want to do a quick poll um, on the kinds of play experiences, maybe the, your top three that you think are um, important and your favorite ways to play and um, what you think would be what you would like to see here at Hillside uh, Park. And how would you like to to do that? These kinds of play. And if you have others, obviously, that aren't shown here that you're interested in, just add them to the, the chat and that would be that would be great. So 
So the next, yeah, I see on my phone, the next poll is up. So how would you like to play at Hillside Park and choose your favorite three? Excuse me, can I interrupt just a second with a technology problem? Sure. So on the uh, chat uh, part, uh, some of us are only sending to Jennifer Fink. There's no option to send to everyone. Can you tell us how to fix that? Oh, sure. When you go into the chat, do you see the, the word two with the colon? There's, it just says two and there's it, a little It doesn't box. say everyone though. The drop down menu does not say everyone. Um, oh, okay. So you, when you hit on the right hand side, the no. little arrow down, you don't get no, everything. Tom, Tom Rush's name just appeared, but it only says Jennifer Fink. And I've been messing with it since we began and I can't get it experienced on Zoom too. So I don't know what this Cisco website, how come I can't get it to work? Uh, let okay. me see if I can find something uh, behind the scenes here. Thank you for letting us know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, and, and, Jennifer, and feel I free to go ahead and put your comments in the chat and we'll try and go back through and make sure we yeah. capture them. We'll definitely okay. capture them. Because we will we definitely just... be copying so, uh, so the Thomas chat. So Rush's name just popped up as a choice. Yeah, and anything you put into Thomas or Jennifer, we'll be able to capture that also. Um, sorry, we, we won't be able to share it with others. Because so I I can do it. Yeah. So I can send it for you, maybe. Yeah. Um, can you can you so say can something send, like yeah. what about the houses to the east? I've been trying to send that since they came on. You know they tied to. The east? So, yeah. So appreciate that feedback, everyone. Again, um, Corey, thanks for that heads up. Um, if you can't send it to everyone, still please do send it to Jennifer or Thomas. We're going to gather all of that. Um, Jennifer, um, I think when we get to Q and A parts too, we'll just multiple of us will um, uh, manage the chat box and, and try and forward questions um, as we get into discussion. Yeah, it's really fun to see the results coming in. Um, thank you everyone for all these great uh, comments. It looks like climbing and perching is is really um, are really kind of uh, coming in as as priorities um, and interest uh, as well as the a lot of the fairy village and and adventure play. So this is great. Um, this is this is really great feedback. I just a reminder, you know, we're going to be coming back in April um, with more ideas based on this kind of feedback. So there'll be more comment, more opportunities, you know, to comment in the future. So this is great. Thank you. We can go to the next slide. Jen, feel free to jump back open with yours. Yeah, I'm. For some reason, the share is not working again. Bear with me. So obviously, a lot of these are compatible as well, right? There can be lots of these different kinds of play experiencing happening at the same time. Um, if you can go back one, that would be great. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Um, so the next thing we wanted to talk about were, were two parts. One is um, the scale, which which Christian has talked about a little bit. You know, the there along the top row um, are kind of examples of large scale play equipment. The middle is the medium scale, and the bottom are more small types of um, interventions and in, in, in experiences. And then across the top, the different columns represent different kinds of materials. So on the left is a little more um, log type structures. Uh, the next row, column is milled wood, kind of a little more finished. Um, the third column is more rustic than natural materials. That top picture is of willow branches, which can be construed in a lot of different configurations. Um, and you know boulders or log tunnels, and then the mixed materials. You know, introducing um, a little bit of metal or a little bit of um, uh, durable materials that might not be all natural materials. So, um, you know, those are the the different things that we 
we'd love for you to think about. Um, and then I'll just walk through so you can see them at a little bigger scale. We can go to the next slide, each of these columns, and then you can kind of think about um, which ones are appealing to you and which ones you think would be appropriate um, here, and we'll do a poll. So the first uh, column is all about the logs. Um, and so, you know, it might be, I think that middle one is kind of a, uh, trying to pick up on the idea of, of the forest itself, but, you know, create a play experience or a balance beam, something as simple as a balance beam at the, as is number, or letter C. And then the next uh, column, is all about kind of milled wood experiences. So you might get platforms and roofs and 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 decks and climbers. Um, maybe something more in the medium scale could even take on different forms. It doesn't have to be kind of the orthogonal. It can be a little more um, amorphous and and uh, sit in that natural environment. And then kind of more of a small milled wood experience is F. And then the next column is, I mentioned the willows, the boulders, and the, the tunnel, um, more natural materials. And then the third column uh, maybe mixes in some of the metal um, and plastic with the wood. Um, you know, some of the, the slides that might be metal um, or even a rope environment, you know, kind of rope material um, would be kind of a small intervention. So would love to get your polling thoughts um, about what kind of playground would best fit at Hillside Park and choose um, three of your favorites from this set. So you're thinking about both scale and um, materials. And you might just be reacting to the picture too about what, what seems like a great fit in your, in your view. Great, so yeah. It looks like in a lot of the natural um, categories are going high, not surprisingly, I think. Um, and also the log structures. Yeah, this is great. Um, super helpful. And, 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 you know, I think a lot of interest in a, um, uh, a lot of interest too in the um, scale that is, you know, falling in the, the medium, uh, the medium category. That's great. So a lot of different, a lot of different ways this could go. Um, so let's, let's, Go to the next slide if we could. This is terrific. Thank you for that information. And the um, the next thing we wanted to talk a little bit about were special feature types of things to consider. Um, what the play area might include. Um, it 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 could include um, accessible space or accessible equipment. Um, like you see at Sammamish um, State Park, they have a, a, a lot of accessibility that um, works not only with folks that are either in wheelchairs or transferring from wheelchairs, but also working on or working with lots of different sensory um, types of uh, experiences and ways that kids and neurodivergent um, kids and, and uh, adults can engage in play. Um, and and so uh, the sensory stimulation or the solo play becomes um, Im important to, to provide those kinds of options for folks. Um, so that's one, one consideration. And what we're gonna do in this section of special features is ask you to think about like how important um, on a scale of one to five um, are these for, for including these ideas. 
So that's that's one of the of the polling questions. And then the next um, page is about uh, two choices um, about fitness and family play. So fitness could these kinds of ideas could be you know very more formal ways of you know really having a workout place. So you they could but it could still look pretty rustic like with the steppers on the upper left or the bars on the on the right where you can really do pull ups and and uh, and do climbing. Um, hill climb events, um, and then exploration and planting are two more categories. Uh, that's fine, it's good, we're gonna keep moving. <laughs> um, the exploration and planting um, are another place where we wanna sort of check and say, how important is it to have these kinds of sensory, multi-sensory kinds of experiences, and then how much planting you know wants to get incorporated, and that could look like a lot of different things, it could be, you know, more restoration and could be tunnels, could be gardens. Um, and so I think that, well, we have uh, maybe one more page um, before we go to the poll. Oh, I guess we do go to the poll. So the poll is looking at these categories of A, B, C, D, and E. Um, if you could rate the importance of including these features at the hillside play area. So A is inclusive play, B is for the formal fitness. C is the play features for the whole family. So uh, ways of actually engaging together. Uh, D is um, small discovery spaces like the fairy villages, which I think folks were, looked like they were interested in in the poll, earlier poll. Um, sensory paths, which just gives different kind of surfaces to walk on or bug hotels. Uh, and then E, pla planting that could be integrated into the play areas. So we, Love to take a moment and do that poll. So you can kind of see there, you're just um, moving the dot all along the one to five. So five is, it's really important to include that type of special feature um, or experience, or one would be it's you know less important. That's great. That's really interesting. Yep, it looks like again the discovery and exploration um, really uh, important to folks and the uh, inclusive play and the uh, play features for the whole family. So ways of interacting uh, and planting integrated into the play area. Really, the top two there: discovery spaces and planting. But it's interesting that actually there there's I think a desire kind of represented by the, these, the numbers being really similar to see a lot of these different kinds of ideas. And then we also wanted to have, we have two more categories around seating and art. And um, so the seating question is this single page, what types of seating would you like to see at Hillside Park? Um, so A is looking at, you know, regular benches, um, B is a little more, casual play, you know, net kind of seating. C might be hammocks. D might be uh, picnic benches, not necessarily exactly that picnic bench, but, it, you know, any kind of picnic bench. Um, e, uh, more accessible seating that, you know, has arms and uh, a back to, to accommodate um, older folks or myself, for example. <laughs> um, F for play area uh, bench, benches or G for uh, more lounging or uh, a path bench is H. So we could do that poll. Um, and again, if you have any other thoughts about seating, feel free to put them in the chat. Oh, people are way ahead. That's fantastic. Everyone's getting the hang of this. That's great. So picnic benches, accessible uh, seating, path seating. So a little more secluded. I kind of interpret the path seating could be more tucked away. Um, benches, play area benches. 
Fantastic. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good on time. Um, the next uh, uh, poll is about art. And so um, the city has a wonderful um, percent for art program, um, which can be incorporated into this park. And so we wanted to just start the conversation around um, ways that uh, ways that art could um, look in the in, in the in the role that art plays in so many different ways of uh, really expanding on what the place is about. And so, you know, getting like this in A, the picture in A, for example, you know, really accentuating uh, the forest character itself. Um, it could also be about the entrance at McKinley and in, in picture um, C and D might be ways of thinking about the edges and the, the entrance. Um, many of these images like E and H, uh, J and K, they have to do with actually uh, the art becoming part of the play experience. So that could be really integrated um, into the play experience for kids. Um, so just wanted to share these variety of images. Um, if you have other thoughts, about what's important to think about with art. Again, put those in the chat and then we'll have the poll go up. That's great. Tree tree structures and wooden poles definitely important. Are really cool. Uh, nature inspired uh, exploring zone. Great. Thank you for this. Is great feedback. So. Um, Let's take a minute and look at the chat because I think some more comments have come in on the chat and um, if anyone wants to do a lean in that's been doing a better job of looking at the chat than I have, feel free. Hey, Deb, it's Jeff. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Really good. A lot of good comments just about um, uh, some of these play options and experiences. Really appreciate that. Keep those coming in. Some questions that I'll, I'll highlight. Um, is yearly maintenance and repair factored into the budget? I'd opt for a less grand structure um, if it will be likely to be better maintained. Um, Alicia, to your question, yes, maintenance will be uh, certainly an important factor as, as we think of um, scale, size of, of the play area. Some questions also around... Um, Vandalism I think was an important one. Just how do we recognize and understand um, uh, the risk of, of vandalism? Uh, thank you for that that comment. Um, absolutely, I, I think that's another factor of um, how and where we place um, any, whether it's play equipment or, or quite frankly, any public uh, park amenity. You know, trying to as best we can get some natural surveillance um, eyes on that amenity. Uh, tends to help with that risk, but it's unfortunately um, always something we need to try and manage. Uh, another question, will we be addressing relative priority of the different things we're providing input on, or will the project definitely incorporate all of these things? Great question. Uh, Deb, you could certainly answer this as well. I would say it's, you know, this is not necessarily a town hall meeting. I think that the the priorities and interests that we're getting really give us a, a strong sense of um, of balance, right? So now, as we start incorporating these these options, um, um, this feedback is really helpful in in directing us in the work, not only of types of play, but um, size and scale of of play. And I, I think. We'll and we, yeah, and when we come back in April, um, and we start to talk in a little more detail about what um, options might look like. If there's something from this meeting that you don't see, then that's a great time to bring it up um, and say, oh, well, you know, there was this one thing that really struck me as important. 
and um, and then you know we can we can uh, take a look at how that fits into the the picture because I think um, there's I, I think we're gonna you know definitely have more time to provide that kind of feedback. Yep. Hey, Absolutely. Jeff, I did receive one comment privately that I think other yep. people may be thinking and wanted to share. Yeah. Um, ha has a more current study, not the one from 2014, um, validated the desire for this type of park? There's already a play area at Tibbetts with parking, and this is pretty close by. I'm concerned that this might not be used to the detriment of people who regularly use the park for other purposes. I see some thumbs up from those who have the video on. That's really good feedback. And again, I, I welcome, um, we welcome that, that feedback. I, I would imagine there are some within the neighborhood or on this call that might not be interested in any type of play area. And that's that's really important feedback um, as well as we, we try and, and, and balance this. So thank you. We yeah, also there is not. Oh, I would just add one that there has not been a a survey uh, since 2014. There's certainly been anecdotal conversation and and communication coming to the city still about interest in play area. But um, again, like any neighborhood park, um, uh, that neighborhood park stri strives to serve a balance of interests um, and and amenities. So. Thanks, Jeff. I have a comment over here. Um, if we have a little more time here related to drainage and how designs will be uh, looked into to address that kind of critical issue of making sure the area just doesn't become really, really kind of mucky. Yeah, Thomas, thanks for that. And that that is also a comment we heard in 2014 and have continued to hear some of the drainage issues on the field. Uh, we're continuing to and will be um, looking into the condition as to why that is. And when we come back in April, um, that will definitely be part of our sort of solution matrix or, or uh, proposed improvements is how can we um, address that drainage as we better understand it uh, to really encourage year round um, um, use of that uh, open lawn and open field for all varieties of, of play. Great, I also appreciate the comment um... And that's a that's a really interesting important point for the long rainy season. So thank you for that comment. So I think we're we can move on to the siting ideas unless anyone else has unless we see other chats we want to cover. So um, we're gonna go back to the um one of the slides that we showed that Christian talked through at the very beginning, now that you've sort of seen some ideas and hopefully juices are flowing about like what are the appropriate scales and what are the, poss the possibilities, um, you know, some of the folks that have, you know, concerns about how this changes the character of the, of the, the park. Um, and this might start start to um, suggest that some sites are uh, kind of less in, um, less visible than others. Um, and so we wanted to walk through these again and share um, uh, share the idea about um, share the different sites so that you can actually uh, talk, do a poll about which play location you prefer um, and. If you have a, a different site that isn't shown here, please put it in the chat. If you prefer no playground, that's also great. If you could put that in the chat, we definitely want to hear the full range of, of thoughts. Yeah. Um, so again, just to reiterate what Christian mentioned, the poll is about the Mount McKinley entrance site is A. In the Cedars, um, when we're hearing from the arborists that um, the 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 uh, they're healthy cedars that can, if we do it sensitively, we can integrate some moderate sized play or small play in these areas. The B is the um, edge of the field. So it would, um, uh, in, in terms of um, full on uh, kind, of kind of baseball use, or, you know, it will, 
use some of that field, but if we think of this as a flexible open clearing, that there's uh, this is definitely a, a spot that is not um, does not impact the trees. And then the forest plateau site C, where um, where there is a, a kind of a level but lower um, a grade, where that's that's another site uh, to consider. Um, but it does have some trees that are uh, the big leaf maples that are um, could you know become a concern and a hazard over time with um, some of the rotting and nature of the, the trees. So um, those are the three sites. We'd love to get a poll going on which play area seems right to you with all the considerations of scale and, and uh, character that we've just walked through. That's a very, that's very interesting. The clearing edge of the site is definitely um, the most sensitive to the trees there, I think. Great, well, that, that's super helpful. And again, feel free to add to the chat, again, if you have another location or, um, uh, you know, think there should be no play area. Um, the other thing that I think that is um, important to think about, and we might have one more slide on the um, distribution of the of the play, and I think we were going to have one more poll for that. Um, so, you know, again, when we're thinking about scale, um, if we are in this, um, you know, clearing site or if you if you were one of the folks that was interested in one of the other sites, um, what kind of play area do you think fits those locations and the play needs uh, uh, the best? So that could be you know one concentrated area um, or some medium and small combinations. They might actually be on different sites or a series of small spaces along a trail or even small spaces um, you know within you know, one of the sites or along a trail. Um, so I think that there's flexibility here, but we wanted to get a sense of what people felt would make the best fit in this location and address the range of needs, play needs for the community. That's great. So yeah, looking like the sort of moderate structure and small play areas around it um, or adjacent to it. That's terrific. A lot of flexibility in there. Um, the lar one large area kind of concentrating it is about 30, 32%. That's great. And and again, we're 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 um what often happens as we're developing options is we look at hybrids. So um, you know, so that as we get further into the details and we are able to come back with more information, um, it can inform more conversation that we're having. Um, so it's not kind of we're definitely going with you know the highest scoring thing. It's not really about that. It's about sort of understanding the the range of interests and sort of combining things as we find out more information about the different sites. So thank you. This is incredibly helpful. Um, really I just want to add. Yeah, I just wanted to add there have been several uh, comments made a few to me privately um, that there is a desire for no play area. They like the park as is. So um, as we put this out to a community survey, we will definitely um, get more feedback from other community members on that. But thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And the online survey has the option of no, no play area as well. You know, we make it into this meter poll. As you can see, it was a bit of a quite an orchestration to pull it together, but it is on the online survey as a choice for others to consider. I also just want to call just a few comments for coming in along the way that were really interesting. I think folks mentioning that um, 
the most important thing is keeping the integrity of the park and the calm feel and the old trees, not letting the old trees go. Um, this, that some folks think a play area would be great. Uh, if it's done right, uh, it could be a valuable addition. It's not always super convenient to drive down to Tibbetts. It's nice to have a walk in option for their children. Um, so that's great. Um, Couple points about option B, the siting location in the field uh, or the edge of the field and forest. Um, some great points here about just great, much better sun exposure, less um, just trees and, and whatnot, and detritus falling down uh, may dry out a little bit quicker. Um, but also concerns about um, exit entry under the site and how it interacts with uh, trails and circulation. And that that's something that. When we bring back a couple of variations and options of a concept for everyone to consider, we'll we'll kind of be looking at the big picture as well that impacts the circulation, impacts to the entryway, so that we're really just we, we don't want to have our blinders on. So we'll, we'll definitely be showing those kind of considerations when we bring back a concept uh, next time. Yeah, so thank you for that perfect lead in, uh, Christian. So as far as our next steps and what we're going to be doing, um, so the information you gave us tonight is very valuable and we will be putting up a survey this Friday with, that contains the same information that you have viewed tonight. Um, you'll be able to access it um, on the Issaquah um, High, uh, Hillside Park web page and the link is down here under the questions um, that we you can go to to take the poll again it will open on friday and be open for one week the feedback we get from this meeting as well as the survey we will take and we will refine these concepts um, and come up with a preliminary design continue further environmental studies as well as initiate a uh, permit process but in the meantime, we will also come back to you and regroup to see if um, your ideas and your thoughts uh, have been heard and are reflected in the design, uh, knowing that you know some people have concerns about trees or knowing there's concerns about drainage and making sure that we are addressing those in the design. And should we move forward with construction on this project, um, we would anticipate it to occur late summer, early fall, um, or into fall this year. Um, so if you have any questions about this project, you can go to our web page there. Again, my email is listed on that page. Feel free to give me a call, um, shoot me an email. Because you registered for this meeting today, I will notify you and send you an email invite for our next Second follow up community meeting and workshop. Uh, we will definitely need additional feedback from you. So, um, thank you for that. And um, with that, we have 13 minutes and I think we could um, take a few moments and open it up for some Q and a. So does anyone have some questions? I'll take a look at the chat here. I did want to comment on the one of the chat comments was about the magical qualities of the park and and um, just want to appreciate that comment. I think that captures it really well of what a magical place it is. And um, so thank you for for bringing that forward. So this is Connie and it was it was unclear as to how we were supposed to engage in the conversation. So I wrote a thing in the chat box and now I'm just bouncing in. So you have a man-made slope at the edge of the cedar trees. Is there any way to recut that slope and create a um, park elements along the cut slope at the edge? Uh, before you get to the field, so it's not in the roots of the trees and it's more in the sun, but it's in a place where you all have not considered yet uh, to do that. And also, uh, is there a way to use the water as a part of a play element? Because the water is there like, I don't know, two thirds of the year, 
But if you made it clean and you made it fun, maybe you could use it as a play element. Great comment, Connie. Thanks. The, the slope area you're referring to, just so we clarify, is that the, sort of an area between A and B? Is that uh, where the kids play? Is that where the kids go down on the sleds? Is that that's where the kids? About? That's where kids go down on the sleds. So right, it's I, right when you walk in the park and it goes down. There's yeah, a yeah, and it's a really cool area, and it's great for sledding in the winter. And it seems yes. like you could use that slope for play elements with not too much modification. Mm -hmm. And right now. You know, we use it some of the time, but unfortunately it does end up in the water, right? So it has to be frozen, otherwise you end up with mud, mud, whatever. So I would like to make a comment about that, um, if I may. That, all that water didn't used to be there. That water was, in, that water started showing up about, I would say, maybe 14 years ago. It, there used to never be water in that park. It wasn't until downtown was developed. Uh, and when Maple Street went in, it, 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 when the development downtown started happening, that's when we started getting all that water. Um, and I've been on the park for 36 years, so I, I'm pretty familiar with this park. Mm -hmm. no, appreciate that history. Plus, the original name of the park is Mountaineer Park. I don't know why it was changed to be named after the um, cemetery. That's kind of crazy, too. I agree. I agree too. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that from Corey. Thank you for that. Yeah. Hi, uh, Hi. my name is Nicole. I am a um, community member here. We use the um, the park often, and my property happens to back up to it. And um, my concern as a uh, park user homeowner is the noise that this new play structure is going to bring in the months where um, more people use it in the summertime. Um, th the noise carries very well. And I'm really concerned with building a play structure close to the adjacent properties and the increased noise and lack of privacy that it's going to bring. Nicole, really appreciate that that feedback. Uh, that, yeah, is very, very important as we, again, balance public space and, and use of public space where we put amenities within that public space and its adjacency to, to private property is, is so important. Um, you're absolutely right. Thanks. So I, I have two comments. Is that okay? You bet. You bet, Corey. Okay. Yep. So first, uh, thanks for looking at least looking at the drainage because I think that's an important part of the whole play experience. Uh, second, uh, sidewalks or accessing the park because one of the top concerns was that uh, it, it's not necessarily safe to get to the park and. That was a problem that came out of the, the uh, discussions about the cemetery as well, where parents were directing their kids actually through the cemetery to get to the park, where the real issue is the lack of sidewalks on Mount Olympus. I know that's not a park problem, but there's several city councilors that should be their problem. Uh, and the third thing for the uh, planners is that going back before 2014, one of the problems in the, in the park were uh, kids doing drugs, kids drinking beer. Um, we had a neighborhood stalker and sort of just a general um, feeling of not being safe in the park. And the um, uh, park staff, Brian in particular, really did a good job after the last meetings, upping the maintenance there and taking out invasives and opening it up a bit without, without uh, destroying the trees and all that. And it's made a huge difference. The problem, one of the problems I see with some of these play areas is it's going to be a potential draw to some of those bad things happening. Because I think one thing you have to consider is if you're a, a, you know, a young mother with your kids standing in a park, basically in the middle of forest with nobody around, how safe do you feel? Because there are some moments of um, sort of creepy feelings or whatever. And I'm, I'm just saying that that's just sort of part of that 
park and and so you you have to think about that as far as creating things that people hide in or i don't know whatever anyway those are my comments thank you Tori, thank you for that um well 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 said i would agree that 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 importance of natural surveillance and sight lines um is is so important to all of us and and really our perception of, of safety um so that's um important with any any management of a neighborhood park and and uh, again thanks for the the feedback i certainly pass on to the park ops team their their work in that vegetation management at hillside park has really helped out I just, just piggybacking off of corey's comments um sorry just to piggyback off uh, corey's comments um just as yeah. someone who has a direct view and access to the park the park is often used by people as a hangout after act like you said there there's no there's no parking there's no direct access and um as a as a resident i am worried about the extra attention and extra um i guess accessibility uh everything else <laughs> um that they currently do back there and the the extra access to that i i am extremely worried about that um there are many times over the summer where um there have been uh, late night activities in the park that have been worrisome. So um, just to piggyback off of Corey's comment, that's something that is a concern and I, I'm worried about that in the future. Can I respond to that as well? Um, my name is Jessica Johnson. I also live in a house that is adjacent to the park. Um, and I just, I would also like to piggyback on that. I've, I, I can't comment to everyone in the chat. So I've just been, <laughs> blowing up Jennifer Fink's um, chat, so apologies for that. But um, my son, we've lived here for about a little over three years, and my 13-year-old was out in the forest. He loves to play back there, and he found a needle. And I have real concerns about um, putting any kind of play structure actually in the forest. Um, we have a fence behind our house, so we don't hear a ton of noise from the park, but um, but we do observe that, yeah, um, you know, to respond to Nicole, we we have seen other activities back there that we just, you know, don't that don't make that space feel super safe in at certain times of the day. Um, and I also wanted to plus one on the sidewalks issue. I've emailed the city council that on that myself. Um, my son has to get to the bus stop um, in the winter months when it's pitch black, and I'm very nervous about that. So. I don't know if that's something that's going to come up on the city roadmap, but I, I would love to put my voice in um, to talk about that. Thanks, Jessica. You know, as we wind closer to seven o'clock, um, again, just so appreciate your time uh, with us tonight. All of these comments are so important. Um, I, I want to thank the 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 team we're working with with Methune. I want to thank our communications team. Thomas Rush, who joined us. Thank you all for test driving this Mentimeter. Um, again, public outreach and public engagement like this is so much easier when we're all in person and in the same room. But um, obviously, we're we're not doing that. Um, so appreciate you um, again your flexibility in test driving this with us. Um, our engagement's not done. Um, um, it certainly, as this uh, recording goes online, you have a chance to take that survey, share that with your neighbors. Um, along with Jennifer's email, you can always email me as well. We really uh, want uh, to hear your continued feedback as we uh, explore this uh, important work. This is a this is a great park that's lived a great life. Um, we want to consider play as an addition to. Um, what this park is not uh, distracting or detracting from the character of this park. So um, thank you all for your time tonight. Um, have a have a great evening and and look forward to furthering this uh, conversation as as this work continues. Thanks everybody. Have a great Thanks, evening. Everyone. Thanks. Have a great evening. <laughs>